Oh, hey guys. So, I got a shadow over my face. It's a little hot up front, but I figured I'd make a video. So, this one's gonna be, hopefully help some people. Uh, and also hopefully, you know, get spread along eventually to where more and more people start doing it. But it's pretty much how to survive being in an RV out here at like truck stops and uh, rest stops and all that. And that, that, that includes, you know, a lot of fifth wheels, goosenecks, motorhomes, you know, just RV in general. But first off, let's start with like any, 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 you know, fuel stop. Oh, first let me just say actually. RVers aren't generally liked out here among truck stops and rest stops for a certain reason. And it's, and it's only because a couple reasons and it's very easily avoidable and fixed. It's just the way that they do a couple things, at, you know, around trucks that kind of hamper other trucks. That's all it is. Uh, but, so you're going up there, you know, you're at the truck pump to get fuel, right? You're in line, if you're in line, just stay, just stay with the motorhome. Stay with the RV. Don't go inside, just wait. Uh, other trucks already hit other trucks that go in line, or get in line and then go inside. Just, just, just wait your vehicle. Makes the line fly, fly faster, especially with more heavily trafficked uh, truck stops. Stop is like two o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning, whatever you know. As long as it's not busy. But, but now you're you now you got your you know you're getting your fuel. Uh, pretty much you know the basics. You know just get fuel, clean your windows, then pull up to the line. There's usually a line up in front of the front pump that's about, eh, it's anywhere from 70 to 100 feet. It's just enough so some of them aren't like this, but it, they're supposed to, when you pull up to the line, for guys like me that are reefers, we can pull up behind you when we're done filling up the truck and still get reefer. Not all set up like that. That's why pulling into the line is very important. And I'm not, I mean, like, a good practice is put your steer tire, your, your front tires, on the line. Or right behind it. Pretty much touch the tip, pretty much. Do not go inside though. Well, I mean, go inside if you're gonna buy just like coffee or something, you know, something quick. And holy, dude, it's breaks are noisy. A coffee or something, uh, a quick drink, you know, something that was less than 10 minutes. Do not go inside to get like food bring the whole family in and stock them up because we, come on let's be honest here we're all I'm the oldest of five going inside to any fucking gas station with your kids and your family it's not exactly fast even if you try to be it's not if you're gonna do that though just pull around find somewhere out of the way you know not you don't have to put in the spot just kind of tuck yourself along the way to uh, side of the cat scale um, on curve, something. I mean, just check yourself out of the way, pretty much. And that applies to all RVs. Um, now, when it comes to parking, this is the one that kind of bugs people probably the most. If you have one of those campers that have slides, slide out, it's fine. Use them, right? Use them. But don't sit in like a middle aisle, well, middle of the aisle, right? And then put out your slide out. Because you take up, well, depending on the on both sides, you're taking up anywhere from at least two to three spots. And it's not exactly fair to everybody else around you. Because it's only, yeah, it's only two two spots, you know, one or two spots are taken up. Those spots are valuable out here. There's not, there's not enough truck parking. That's why if you ever notice you go into a truck stop late at night, trucks are stacked up on the entrance, along the curbs, you know, wherever they fit, they're kind of just sitting there. That's because there's not enough spots already as it is. Yeah, two of those trucks out there could have been already in spots instead of now they're having to sit somewhere else. Uh, yeah, so if you want to do that, cool. But, do it on the end. And only, like, do it on the end of the aisle. Well, okay, be careful on the end of the aisles. That's where most trucks get hit. 
when I say end of the aisle, have a curb next to you. Something that will physically protect your vehicle. Also, I don't park at curbs. Pro tip, if you want to survive a truck stop, don't park on the end, especially with slide outs. Uh, but like, park on the end of, an, uh, end of an aisle that has a curb on it, or a building, or something. Or, uh, park along, not even in a spot, park along a curb or something that's, you know, out of the way, and then you, then more likely, nobody's gonna care that you have your slide outs on both sides. Uh, now rest stops, this applies to rest stops too. And also, for those just for those guys that are moving, the you know, U-Haul pulling like a, a little trailer behind them, or even campers pulling, having family follow them and other vehicles, you know, because RV's not big enough or whatever, uh, fine. But if you pull out of rest stops and you go, if you're, if you're like a 20 foot, 20 to 25 foot in general, you know, package, you don't need a whole truck stop or a truck truck spot. Go to the car spot. Because behind the car spot, there is a whole curb you can park along with your family, by the way, that's following you, without taking up only a third of the truck, truck spot. Because nothing is worse than worst feeling. When you're out of hours and you can see the empty spot, what you think is an empty spot from the truck or from the interstate, and you start to turn in, set up to turn in, and then there's, you know, pretty much some guy to get on a third spot. Okay. Go to the car spot, right? Just trust me, car always can truck to back up and, and get all around you and then you're not in their way. You're, you're not. But absolutely do not do this. Do not have your family with you to take a truck, you know, go into a rest stop and you happen to, okay, go to the truck spot, fine. Don't have your car. Tell them if wherever you go, they sit behind you if you're going to the truck spot area. Especially for those that have more than one car. I've seen this when somebody had two cars. Somebody pulls in a truck spot. It was starting to fill up. Our truck spot, yeah. Starting to fill up, and then a car went on the left of them and the right of them. They took out three spots. All three of those vehicles combined don't even equal what the truck's length is. Yeah, don't do that. That is not okay. I don't know. That's just actually, that's just being rude. It's just like, that's just saying, saying, I don't give a fuck about anybody else's opinions or feelings or nothing. I don't care about anybody else's needs. It takes zero effort to think about how you're gonna park that affects others. For example, I'm a night runner, okay? I drive nights. My thought process is always, how can I park so I don't get, so I others are not in my way when I try to leave? It takes me no effort. So I generally I avoid having uh, curbs in front of me, buildings, hard objects, and I know where trucks generally will park. Uh, I try to keep as much open space in front of me, because that way even if trucks do park in front of me, chances are I can get out without having to ask somebody else to move. I do the same thing in my car. Although, the car's a little different though. How can I park to protect my car from getting rear-ended or somebody that does not have the size of their own vehicle and hit me in the front, you know, they're, with their front. That's why I don't care parking in the back of the, the, the like, parking lot and walking. I don't. I don't care. A little walk, you never hurt anybody. Yeah, sometimes it sucks because it's cold. I'm from Wyoming, dude. I'm, like, I'm from one of the coldest states you can get in this country. Yeah, heat sucks sometimes. I still do the same thing in the summer. Now, if you got pets, pick up the shit. Like, it already bugs me enough for other trucks to do it. Especially when they do it in more commonly walked areas. They, okay, if you're not gonna pick up the shit, just at least don't take your dog to the most, one of the more commonly known walking areas. And it's pretty obvious what they are, by the way. It's not like you have to think about it. Oh, look, the building's straight in front of the lot and there's a grass in the middle between the building and trucks. Honestly, don't take your dog there because a lot of drivers are gonna walk through that grass area to get to the, to the truck stop or the rest stop. Pick up the other sides and the rear. Away from trucks. A truck driver shouldn't have to worry about stepping in some fucking giant dog, dog shit and then we can't clean off very easily out here. Not like you can just, you know, go home and just 
throw your shoe, well, scrape it off, throw your shoes in the washer or whatever, however you want to clean it off. A wire, a wire brush, etc. I don't understand how people can't do this themselves. Like, it is mind blowing. That, I don't know. I get it. Like, having money and retirement and vacations, nights, and all that. And I mean, no, it's not like I'm necessarily jealous. I'm not. I'm like, you earned it. And all these young people out here think, oh, you owe me everything. No, no. I am a firm believer in you get what you, you know, you get out of life what you put into it. Uh, but. Just, uh, it's kind of a little disheartening when it's you see a certain generation always talk shit about a younger generation, but then they do the same things. They're like, just says, and courteous and rude, and affect other people. It, it, it takes no effort to at least think before you do. It's actually, you know, at least from an outside point of view think before you settle on that action. For example, our viewers, you want a good parking spot, go to Walmarts. Go park in the Walmarts in the back of the lot, like, you know, towards the street, that is, the entrance side. And, you know, it's the back of the lot, yeah, you gotta walk, but Walmart's pretty much okay with you being there. Trucks can't really go there. Very few trucks, or Walmarts, allow trucks anymore. Because again, so why change of behaviors is important. The bad ruined it for the majority. It's a minority ruined it for the majority. Uh, so, do I think truck stops and bus stops would, you know, force you to leave their premises? No. But eventually, I get, if enough people start complaining about it, some action would be started. Like, they already tow trucks who sit in areas, or park in areas that they're generally not supposed to. Uh, so don't risk it, is what I'm saying. Don't be a nuisance to other drivers. That's all it comes down to. Nobody, nobody would tow those vehicles if they, if they weren't being a nuisance to other people. How fast could a tow happen? Less than 20 minutes. So the, the really bad spots like Salt Lake, for example, Salt Lake City, it's a really tight truck stop, Flying J, that is. A tow truck usually is either right across the street or sits on the lot. At least when I was there a lot. Now I'm not there so much, I don't know. So, I mean, less than 20 minutes, they're getting hooked and pulled out of the way. But, anyways, do you guys stay there? And, you know, for your RVers, enjoy your vacations, enjoy your travel season. Kind of, I mean, it's going to maybe sound bad. Can't wait for it to not be RV season because more spots. You know, less, less how this one comes to barking. But hey, you guys stay safe out there. See you next time. Bye.